The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live, phenomenal women. Featuring in-depth interviews with today's most inspiring women. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, phenomenal women. Two thousand bucks. I don't even want to talk for a second. I'm letting the song play for just a couple of seconds so we can really feel the vibe. What's going on? We know it's tax season, so you're feeling this song. This is another edition of Black Hollywood Live, phenomenal women. I am Tara Johnson, one of your hosts, and we, I'm here, of course, the lovely. Hello, everybody. It's Ashita Andre here with Phenomenal Women, and I'm excited to talk to this Phenomenal Woman that we have in the studio. You know, I am. I, <laughs> we, I have a good time here since I started on this show all the time. Mm-hmm. But when I heard that Angie Fisher, Grammy-nominated singer. Okay, let me put it in perspective. Not only was she nominated for a Grammy, she had a single out. She hadn't even had the pleasure of dropping, or our pleasure of dropping an album yet. That's how bad she is. That's what I'm talking about. So today we have with us Angie Fisher. Can we say yay? I would love to have you sing, but I'm just like, you gotta get prepared for that, especially with this powerhouse voice. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. You Thank can't you. just blow out all our microphones like I that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. You know, I sing very loud, so. You sing very well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? I'm, I'm well. I feel good. You have so much going on right now. Yes, I do. I do. I'm working on my album, you know, and um, just, you know, trying to finish that up. Try and we're excited. And get, get it done. Yeah. And when should we? When will that drop? You think? Um, it, let's just put it out there because we need just, more from you, Angie. You I need would say more third from quarter. You. I would say third quarter. Third quarter. Yes. <laughs> Mark the calendar. <laughs> yes. Third quarter. Third quarter. So you have been singing and mm-hmm. you have been gracing us and blessing us with this voice for how long now? Oh goodness, it's it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. Were you singing in your mother's womb? Is that yes. how it goes? You know what? My mother used to tell me that she used to sing while she carried me. Like every day. Really? She sings too. My okay. father sings as well. But <clears throat> she would sing constantly. And did yeah. your parents want you to, did they ever say, you know, Angie, you're going to be a singer. Like you have to be. No, you know what? They didn't push me in, in that sense, mm-hmm. but they knew that I had a gift. And so they just encouraged me to sing. Not so much let this be your profession, but just you know, sing. You have the gift, so why not? And so they encouraged me to sing. And of course, I sang in church. You're about to say amen. Yeah, amen, somebody. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, so that's my roots. Right. Gospel mm-hmm. church um, is my roots, you know, but I just kind of developed this gift as time went on. My parents played music around the house all the time um, jazz, gospel, um, any type of music that just was uplifting and encouraging. And so I grew, I grew up learning and listening to some great music. Right awesome music awesome artists great singers so um that's that's what i know i have to ask you growing up in church Uh uh-huh and singing in church Mm -hmm. there's always that go-to song you know when you go to service that you're not expecting like angie come on up here and sing a song for Uh us Uh uh-huh what's your go-to song it was either um, amazing grace Mm -hmm. of course or he looked beyond my fault Two great ones. Again, yeah. I wish we could get her to sing, but that's okay. And another one, there's To God Be the Glory as well. That was Oh my gosh, one. that's one of my favorites. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so those three. Those, those three. three. Uh-huh. Fantastic. Yeah. IRS. Yes, IRS. The song that dropped, <laughs> I remember hearing the song, and I said, is that human? Is that is that a real person singing? Or like, did somebody make that up? Is that a couple people? How's that coming out of one person? Mm-hmm. Tell us about how that song came about. Okay. And how you put your stank on it, because you put a little bit of stank on it. <laughs> I gave it all I had. You had I to. gave it all you I just, had. You just did. You know, okay, this is what happened. My manager, Dorsey Fuller, introduced me to another great uh, producer who is, his name is Roe Holiday. Okay. And um, he was a part of a group, Something for the People. I don't know if you guys remember that group. I back do in remember the day. them. Um, and so we were over at his place listening to just different tracks and songs and I'm I'm trying to I wasn't even signed at this time but it was just kind of going through the um the process of just listening and seeing what he had 
And so I'm listening to all these different products and all these different tracks and music and and he plays IRS. And, and what did you be, think? And be slayed. I knew that voice. Uh-huh. I knew I know his voice. Um, what happened was be Sl- he played IRS. I said, wait a minute. I know that voice. He said, yeah, that's be slayed. And I said, wait a minute. Play it again. And so he played it again for me. And he played it a few times. I was so intrigued and so drawn to this song that I said, I just want to record it. And was it the message? Because 2,000 bucks could save my, you know. It was the message. It was the passion behind Mm -hmm. it. It was the delivery, the approach. Because from the gate, he he sang that entire thing like so hard and so I'm going to give it to you from beginning to end. And I said, I want to do that. So B Slade wrote the song and he, he also, wrote, re- had he recorded and released it already? Yes, so it's, on kind of, his diesel, it's on his Diesel album. Okay. Yes. And so Ro said, if you want to meet him, you can't. I said, I've always wanted to meet him. And he said, you'll meet him. And that's exactly how he said it. You'll meet him. And, and you went in the studio. I went into the studio and I recorded it. And what did you think when the recording was done? When you heard it mm-hmm. all, you know, put together to master the mix, mm-hmm. you sat back and you listened to it. What did you think of the song? I said, okay, I did it. I did it. No, oh, this is going to be a Grammy. This is going to no, be nothing no, like that. No, it wasn't that. because I, I didn't go in with the intentions of this is going to be my song. Mm-hmm. I never went. I liked it and I just wanted to record it. So that's that's what I did. I just wanted to record it. Because it was more of a challenge for myself hmm. because that's the song you have to deliver it. Mm-hmm. That's the type of song that you, you know, you have to. You can't sing it soft. You can't sing it pretty. You got to sing it like I'm about to lose my mind. Right. The IRS is after me. I, I don't know what else to do. So therefore, I gave it all I had. And it was just a song that I liked for myself. And I just wanted to record it. Didn't know that it was going to be a single of mine. Didn't know that it was going to be nominated for a Grammy. Didn't even know that I was going to sing for the pre-Grammy telecast. That that was not even in my mind at the time. Didn't even know all of this was going to happen. And it just took off. But are you surprised at how everyone can relate to the song, mm-hmm. how it resonates to everyone? Yes, because it, it did for me. Mm-hmm. You know, so I did. I knew at the time. I know how I felt when I first heard the song. So I can only imagine what every, everyone else felt when they said, "Wait a minute, hold on." This girl, I, I've been called every name in the book. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been on stage and people are calling me out of my name. And, you better say, okay, all right. You're like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> throwing that but, shoe. All right, you know, whatever they have in their purse, they're throwing it at me. You know, And it's okay because that's how they felt at that moment because mm-hmm. I know how I felt at that moment. I was like, oh, my God. And I play it again, play it again, play it again. So... That's how that's how that whole thing came about. Aisha Morris um, at KJLH, mm-hmm. she heard it and she said, "I have to play this song ASAP." And so she put it in rotation, and people just kept calling in. Oh, what's that song? I want to hear that song. And before you know it, they had me in to come in and do an interview, and it just kind of, you know, it had a life of its own, and it just kind of grew from there. But I did, like I said before, this was not a song that I just said okay this is going to be my single this is going to be I just I wasn't even at that point I just wanted to record it wow that's an amazing journey yeah that's an amazing journey I'm I'm just listening (laughs) I I don't even have a question I'm just like (laughs) you know yeah because it's it's you know my mom always told me this and she says and this is exactly what happened with you Mm -hmm. doors open with no handles wow that's exactly what happened. I never heard happened. that. Yeah, that's I never heard that. T-shirt. I'm, I'm making a t-shirt, t-shirt today. Doors open with no handles, and that's exactly what happened. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. Yep. But you've been at this for a, a, a minute, though. Yes. Singing. I mm-hmm. have. Background and doing studio background vocals. And, yeah. like, tell us some of the people. If, you know, I know there's a long laundry list of people, <laughs> of greats that you have worked okay. with. Okay. So, um... Michael Jackson, uh, Jamie Foxx, Michael Buble, um, Dave Foster, uh, Celine Dion, Mary J. Blige, um, Kelly Clarkson, Fantasia. Um, and I love Celine Dion. I've been wanting to see her in Vegas for oh, the she's longest. Back. She's back. She's right? back. She, no, she's she not back really yet. Sing. Mariah took her spot, I think. Okay. Okay. Mariah but, Carey as well. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> I'm t- Mariah I'm saying by her first name, like we friends, yeah, Mariah's Mar- taking her spot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think her 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 um husband 
oh, cancer that's right. came back, so she oh, left to care for okay. him. But I've been wanting wow. to see her in Vegas for the longest time. Yes, yeah, she and she's amazing. She's a gift. Yeah, she's a gift. How is it to work with some of these great artists? Mm -hmm. <sighs> um, humbling, humbling. Um, to to you know, I've worked with Dave Foster. I've I'm one of his contractors for hiring other singers to sing for great artists like I just named. And, you know, he would call me and say, I need some singers, some great singers mm -hmm. that can really just get in and get out. Um, but that are professional, that can sing, and that can just do it well. And I would call in certain singers, and we would sing whatever is given to us. And to to be asked to even be someone to hire great artists and great singers to be a part of all these different projects is a humbling experience. To be trusted. Yes, that's huge. Yeah, that's to huge. be trusted and that's that's what it is. And and you know, it, I'm I'm just blessed to be able to to work with one of one of the greatest producers in the world. So how do you break down a song? How do mm -hmm. you choose which note? Or do they choose that for you? Do you have the luxury? Well, it of all depends on the producer mm -hmm. because normally the producer knows where he wants to go with that particular song since he's producing and he's doing the arrangements of that particular song. So he'll tell us, this is what I need. And he may not even know or she may not even know what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but they'll, it's, sometimes it's kind of like a thing of, we'll figure it out while we're in the session. But sometimes when you're singing, do you feel it? Mm -hmm. And you'll say, oh wait, I'm feeling this. This is the better note. Well, well I wouldn't say Normally better. they'll say, <laughs> yeah, they'll no, get, right. no, cause they'll kick us out of it. I, know, I, like, well, I didn't tell you to that. sing that yeah, note. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> Normally they give us the note and you know, it's, it's, it's you know, soprano, alto, tenor. Mm -hmm. So what they'll do is tenors, here's your note. Sopranos, here's your note. At times, they may have uh, certain people to do a, an off note, a certain type of note, and they'll, he'll maybe choose two or three people to sing a different type of note than what the other group is doing. And so um, he gives it to us, and we do it. There's no rehearsing. There's no, you know, we may go over it a couple of times, but come on, let's get it in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's this is what we do. This is what we love. So you got to just do what they tell you to do. Right. You know, whatever the note is, whatever the section is, you just kind of go with what the producer's giving you at that time. Can I commend you for, because I have been in a venue mm -hmm. when someone mentioned your name and you were about to sing and I got ran over by some, I'm not joking. I got ran over by some ladies like, that's the IRS lady, move out my way. <laughs> and I call me IRS lady. They called you IRS lady. <laughs> and I just moved okay. out the way because I was like, I don't want to be hurt and I want them to hear the IRS wow. lady. So you okay. had, you're, you are coming off uh -huh. this Grammy, you know, nomination. And, and I saw you in the royal blue gown when you sang at the pre Grammys, uh -huh. and you looked fantastic. Thank you. It sounded amazing. Thank you. And as you sit here, mm -hmm. you are so humble. Mm -hmm. You are so thankful. How do you keep a level head on your shoulders? Because we know not everyone can do that. Right. How do um, you stay grounded? I would have to say I, it's, it's my foundation, really. I have an awesome, I had an awesome childhood, but my parents had instilled in me and my brother, um, whatever gifts you have is not yours, it's loaned to you. This is not about you. How about that? You know what I mean? And I've, I've known that all my life. It's not about me, mm -hmm. it's what I carry and I have to protect what I have. It's not mine. It's just loan. So I have to protect what God has given me. And I know that it's not for me. It's for other people to experience. And that way they can have their own experience with the gift that God has given me. So I'm humbled by it. For God to even trust me enough to be able to give me such a major, major gift to say, okay, I'm going to take care of it and I'm going to carry it all the way through. I love it. I love that too. Now, speaking of gifts, because mm -hmm. I, I wanted one of my gifts to be able to sing, <laughs> but I, I didn't get that gift. Did you want I, got, I got the dimples of shit, right? <laughs> and they're cute. <laughs> they're, they're cute. cute. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have to have the gift to be able to sing, or can someone who is not able to sing be taught 
to sing? Is there a way that you can? That's you know, difficult. That? That's a loaded question because it all depends on the person. I I believe that there are certain artists and singers that just have it. Yes, like they're a born Whitney Houston. Yeah, which is, that's a just, gift. A yeah. gift is what you're born with. You you it's it's in you, and this is what you do. Mm-hmm. It's a part of you. Um, now for those that have to be taught, are you talking about training the gift or yeah, just like being it, taught how to sing? Taught a little bit how to sing, but is can you train that muscle to be able to at least carry a note and be able to sing? I know I, I you know, mm-hmm. I'm asking this as I know I'm myself. She really wants. I really want to know because I, I just I love it and I'm right. like, God, I wish I could sing like that, but I can't. If you have, if you already have a gift, yeah. and you just need it to be, um, what's the word? If 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 you need it to be trained in such a way to where you just have to, you, you need assistance, then then I think it's possible. But I also believe, too, that it has to be a gift to be able to to sing sing. now, like, for instance, anybody can get up and sing. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between someone who has a gift and you can tell they have it and someone who has been helped along the way and saying, okay, they're trained to do what they do. A gift is someone that has is born, natu- it's, an, it's a natural thing. Right. They can get up and sing whatever and it's natural and you can tell versus someone who has had to go through the process of having to, you know. But that's what you bring out when, well, for me, when mm-hmm. I hear your voice, mm-hmm. that's what I feel like, oh man, I wish I could sing like that. Aww. I wish I can just, you know, right. put some stank on it, like you said. <laughs> I, I, I may not be able to put some stank on, but I just want to be like, dang, can I sing? Can she just at least train my vocal cord just a little some bit? Yeah. Folks, some people can be trained. I yeah. believe that. I believe that. But there's a, but it's, it's it's harder for them mm-hmm. because it's not it's not natural. Not oh okay. It isn't natural it's versus just, someone who has it and they can just they can just, just do it. Right. And they don't even think about it. They just do it. They just right. That's a gift. This beautiful voice. Thank you. Congre- I just love it. <laughs> I just love Thank it. Thank you. And not to throw shade on anybody whatsoever. So I'm going to put that disclaimer out there before yeah. I even ask the question. Okay. But s- music has changed so much. The mm-hmm. industry, the artists that are put out there mm-hmm. today. And so many people, I don't call them singers. I call them entertainers because uh-huh. it's kind of like this package that people yeah. are putting out. I mean, I think you're a great entertainer, but you a sang like, girl, you sang. You know what mm-hmm, I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, how do you feel about the like the state of the music industry and the type of artists that are being presented today? <sighs> Tough question, huh? right? You know, <laughs> I'm I am um, I'm disappointed. Mm. I am. It, I'm, it saddens me because it has changed over the years. It's not the industry mm-hmm. is not what it used to be. Now it's a money making game. Right. Not to say that it wasn't like that before, but see back then they embraced singers, mm-hmm. great artists who put out great music. Right. And it was all about the music. Now it's a it's so many other things that's tossed in this whole bowl of you got to be an entertainer, you got to be half naked. You have to, you know, it's just <laughs> right. it's so much that I believe it's, it's a distraction from the gift. Mm-hmm. It's a distraction and people get thrown off. Um, you get a good beat. People could care less about the lyrics. Right. It's about that beat, which I'm not against because that's what moves us and that's what makes us feel good. But what is the message right. that's being lost? The art of music is lost. You know, so that's, I'm just disappointed. To get back to your question, right. I'm, I'm disappointed. How yeah. do you keep yourself going? Because you've been doing this, you know, you have mm-hmm. a tremendous career as a, as a backup singer, mm-hmm. right? But how have you kept yourself going and kept your dream alive of one day I'm going to be in the front, <laughs> my name is going to be in that marquee with the changing music industry? Right. Like, what has been your inspiration to keep going all these years? My passion for it, like my drive for it never stopped. I mean, there's been times where I, I have been discouraged and said, okay, maybe I need to do something else. Mm-hmm. But it's in me to do it. And I have to do it. And it goes back to what I said before. It's not about me. Right. Mm-hmm. So I can't. it can't be a selfish thing with me. I love what I do. And it's, I'm very passionate about what I do. But it's not all about what I want to do. This is, I'm called to it. And you have to do it. I have to do it. Even when you were working that job and your boss said, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to fire you. Mm-hmm. Because you I was doing to, both. You know what I mean? You were balancing I was, and doing I was both. trying to do it both. And whatever it took me to do both, that I was going to do it, you know, because I had this job 
that I needed. Right. You know, everybody needs a job. You got to pay bills. You got to pay bills. IRS. Pay right back. Pay right back. So I had this job for stability. And then I had this music job on the side at the time to just kind of finagle my way and figure it out. Because in this industry, you, you don't know. Right. You, you're just kind of figuring it out. And so I knew that I had this job that I could kind of depend on. You know, I knew what I was getting every month. It wasn't a big deal. But I wanted to be over here. Uh-huh. So how was I going to be able to get over here but move from here to where it was a smooth transition to where I wasn't struggling? And that's the that's struggle, the, right? The struggle that's is the real. battle. Mm-hmm. That's the battle of how do I move from this point A to point B and it can be a smooth transition. It's never a smooth transition. Right. It's always going to be bumps. You just don't know what bump you're going to have to deal with in that moment in time. Yeah. So you just kind of like you have to have faith. You got to have passion. You have to have your drive. And you got to just keep going. You got to stay focused. So that boss that kicked you out of that job. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Did you send he or she flowers saying thank you for kicking me I, you out? Know, and I don't even me? know where he is. I, I that was that was a while ago. So I don't even. He's probably at a different job now. Who knows? You <laughs> <Right>? know. <laughs> but I I thank him for that right? because that was the push that I needed. Like I would have probably still been there. Isn't that amazing? Mm. If yeah. someone out of the blue didn't hear you singing like a company outing, mm-hmm. it was like you you too good. You're too much for this. Yeah, you gotta go. That was that was the push that I needed. It was still kind of hard because mm-hmm. I'm in the back of my mind. I kept saying, "How am I going to do this?" Right. I have this two year old son that I have to care for and take care of. How am I going to be able mm-hmm. to do this? And the God honest truth, I prayed about it. And after I prayed about it, I had the peace of God. And I said, "Let me get my two weeks notice. I'm mm-hmm. out of here." I and since it. then, since then, I have not had a nine to five. Amen. To Amen. That. Man. Now, speaking of nine to five, who was your top five? <laughs> who would you who was your top five artist today? Today, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. my top five. Whoa. OK, Jasmine Sullivan. Oh, a good one. Um, and we're talking about singers because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm all for singers. I love Michael Buble. Love I Michael do. Bublé. I love yeah. Michael Bublé. I love Michael. And I actually had a chance to see him live. Is it? I mean, his Christmas specials are like crazy to me. Phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal. Um, oh, it's so hard. Because you said singers. Sing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I listen to, a, I mean, there's there's so many that I listen to, but my top five could you know, I was thinking about when she said nine to five. It's like, oh, what's your top five? <laughs> right. um, there's, there's so many that I listen. There's people. I mean, but back in the day, though, like I listened to old school type stuff mm-hmm. too. Um, okay, PJ Morton is another one. Oh yeah. Um, oh goodness, that's a good one. That's it's a good. good one. You, you got me. Yeah, I got I'm you. stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Um. Mm. But well, while you think about that, speaking of old school and new school, yeah, we had this Robin Thicke, Pharrell, mm-hmm. Marvin Gaye family case that just got settled. <laughs> right. I oh, it got settled now? It's settled? It's That one is settled. I think there's, there's another one. I think there's an injunction that's going out right. and possibly a second case, too. Against them? Against Pharrell. Yeah, I think Pharrell there's... And um, it was, it's someone else now, too. I'm... That, now that may be. I know there was possibly an injunction to try to get blurred lines like shut down. They would stop playing. Yeah, it, it was Robin, and, and then it's now it's Pharrell. Yes, now, now that's it's right. Pharrell that's happy. right. Right. Yes. Now happy. Yeah. So how you're in the studio working on this new album? Mm-hmm. Is this in the back of your mind? Like, I mean, because one of the statements that Pharrell made was, you know, this is really sad for artists and creativity because mm-hmm. now you have to think about this. You're in the studio. You're just vibing. Right. Do you have to think in the back of your mind? Well, does that sound like Marvin Gaye? Does that sound like Michael Jackson? Does that sound like Prince? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, instead of just letting the creativity flow, mm-hmm. what is your opinion of this whole case and situation? It's too much. <laughs> it's too much. It's, it's, it's unnecessary. It's unne- unnecessary I, just, on the part of the family suing? Yes. Or, okay. I, don't, I don't, because you don't go in... See, Pharrell's a true artist. He is a, he's a true artist, and he's right. another. He's another one. He's a true artist, so 
I don't it, you can get in trouble for those kind of things. I don't think you go in. There's artists out there that are bold that will try to steal and will try to mimic, you know, and, and there's they have to pay the price for that. That's something that that's a consequence. But I don't believe that Pharrell went in to say, OK, I'm going to make this my own and I'm going to steal this part and steal this right. and take this. I don't. That's just my opinion. But hopefully they'll settle it and get it done and get it squared away. And then there's peace afterwards. I hope so. Because I, I mean, it can be like this thing that ripples through where you have to always now think about, you know, yeah. think, right. Think because about. sometimes, you know, when you make a beat, certain beats can sound similar, similar, but they're not it has to be the exact right. same Be thing. Right. You know, it has to be without a shadow of a doubt, this is what they did and this is how you can tell. And but, what this if, is, but what if you say I'm inspired by it, such as what they, they said. said, I was inspired right. by it, you which can means be inspired, that you, you can be inspired by it, but it has to be, you can be close and it can be similar, but it can't be the same thing. And that's what and they that's did. The fight. Yeah, that's what that's they the did. Fight. They say, okay. That's the fight. That's the fight. Mm -hmm. So we know you're not stealing anything in the studio. No. So what can we expect? I don't yes. want anybody suing me. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> what can we expect from you on this new album? Oh. And if you want to leak it to me early, that's fine. Colors. <laughs> Colors. 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 That's how I can the best describe this album. Full of colors. Full of colors. Yeah. Um, you know, I when I think of IRS, I think of like a real dark brown. You know, because it's that gritty, mm -hmm. hard hitting, right. you know, but then there's these other type of songs that I have that are nothing like IRS that are lighter and they're smoother and they're sweeter, you know, so it's um, it's 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 an interesting album and I'm. Don't expect it to be rah, 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 rah okay. on every song because that's not what I'm all about. I can do rah, rah but I can do sensual and sweet as well. Can you even, can you describe your voice? Cause I'm listening to you say, oh, we're gonna have a stroke of brown and some nice red and a little. Yeah. Can, can you describe your voice, your gift? I don't even wanna say your voice. Mm -hmm. Can you describe your gift? It is um, a limited gift, meaning um, I have, a range. I can sing high, but mm -hmm. I can sing low. And just to kind of give you an example, um, this was, I guess, a, a few months back. Um, a couple of the people at the label, I, I let them listen to a couple of songs that I had just recorded. Right. And I said, listen to this. I didn't tell them who it was. I listened to this, and um, they were like, oh, this is not. Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> I said, it's me. It's not you. It's me. They didn't believe me. So your label doesn't even know the full the range, range. What you they can didn't do. know. And so they played another song. Oh, this is nice. This is, oh, this is beautiful. Who is this? It's me. But I sound different on every song. That's the thing. Interesting. So my voice has different personalities because I can sing low. I can sing high, I can sing soft, I can sing hard. I can, you know, I have all these different elements mm -hmm. to my voice and I try to use them all. <laughs> As you should, yeah. right, right? I try to use them all. So, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I just don't want anyone to think or have this expectation of it's gonna be a hard hitting song on every, a hard hitting album on every, it's not gonna be like that. Every song is, has its own personality. I love well, I'm it. looking forward to I it. I am too. Yeah. yeah. I, I wanna, and it's me, okay? So, right. <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> it's, it's me, I promise you. I mean, anything that I do on my album, I can do live. So I don't want anyone to think that that's not her. That right. can't, mm -hmm. it's deaf, it's just I have a lot of, depth to what I can what I can bring and and you'll see that you'll see that the third quarter I want yeah I want to <laughs> see it hear it third we all quarter. want to experience it yeah well I can't thank you enough for being thank here thank you for having me and just not just sharing because your voice is a gift but I have to tell you, you as a person and I think mm -hmm. you agree with me and she that you are a gift in yourself thank just you your persona your spirit 
Thank you. Just such a privilege to, to be here and you talking with us. And we just love the fact that you came. Thank you. Of course. So very much. Thank you. And when that album drops, if you want to bring it here first. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to put that out there. Yeah, yeah. We're going to bring it here first. We can do an exclusive yeah. right here on Phenomenal Women. You know how we get down. Right, right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for having me. Oh, okay. thank this you. so much fun. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Anytime you want to come back, just let okay. us know. Right. Okay. With that album. No, I'm just kidding. No. With that album. Right. Okay. Hello. <laughs> hit, hit. In that laugh. <laughs> Thank yes. you so much, Angie. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us. We just had a fantastic time again. I'm Tara Johnson. And, and I'm Ashita Andre. And we're looking forward to inspiring you next week. Bye. From producers Maria Menounos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African-American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. Hollywood Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.